so fine so i will tell you orally so when so let's open this notepad not notepad paint i will try it okay so now we are learning about the ajax request okay so ajax means asynchronous javascript activex control so this is called as an so ajax was invented by the microsoft okay so by the microsoft so when the internet explorer first was there so right now the ajax uh, is the main thing only but we are able to see different versions of the ajax right now but we need to have the foundation of this ajax what is an ajax and why it is useful we need to have like up so now let's try to understand how the web actually works so here we will be having a server okay so i already told about you i think i didn't remember so server will have a web server here so server means nothing but it's a computer only don't think that it's server means something uh, uh wonderful piece or something like that don't think like this it's a computer only so when this computer becomes a server is when you install a web server inside this one okay so there are wide variety of web servers available in the market out of them is iis the most popular one is an apache so you will be able to heard about this one then this is the most popular one is the nginx why because this is a reverse proxy server so these are reverse proxy server and all those things i don't want to go more into deep into this one so these are all things when you learn the networking when you are installing so why we use the nginx as the reverse proxy server those all things are different different thing so we'll try to learn it afterwards IAS means this one was invented by the Microsoft. So at the starting of the uh, thing, so Microsoft supports only the IAS. Okay, the .dot net uh, application, whichever the application was developed in .dot net, it will support only in the IAS. Okay, so previously, so that means you need if when you are learning the .dot net means you need to run in the Windows operating system only. Okay, you need to run in the Windows operating system only, and that too you need to use the IAS web server. This IAS server, web server is a something like a graphical user interface. It will be having graphical user interface, which which every programming or developers, hardcore developers, don't like this one. Why? Because so like this, for example, paste means you will be having these all types of options. There is no command prompt or anything for this one. When this Apache and Nginx came, these are all command command line arguments. So you will be giving all through the command line only. So now these are all came as an open source. Okay, these are all came as an open source. So when this came, the game has been changed. The entire the web applications and all the things game has been changed. Open open source languages has been came like PHP, Ruby, and all those things are also came. So when these are all came into the market, this .dot net has been came something like uh, .dot net has been down has become down. So now what what they have decided? So if we continue like this process, so .dot net making this .dot net framework actually we will call it as a .dot net framework. we will if we continue this dot net framework like this supporting only the windows and supporting only in the ias web server so that means when you have when you want to develop a application using the dot net framework means then you need to use the windows server and also then you need to use the web server only but when i want to use a language with php or ruby or anything at that time which was popular i can use either in linux in windows or in the another one is mac i can use any any operating system operating system is not a constraint for me and also the web server also web server so i am using linux means i am very much comfortable with the apache let's assume so i can select operating system linux and i can select the web server as apache so like this the combination also so windows apache like this i can select and nginx nginx also i can select or otherwise if i want to if i if you are comfortable with ias means ias also it will support so like this this open source languages created lot of uh, uh, lot of thing in the market that almost 75% of the web applications are developed in php and all those things only so we now also when you try to search here 75% to 80% of web applications and all those things are developed in php and all remaining all share the market of this python dot net and all those things share the market so now in order to overcome this one so if it continues like this means then dot net we need to close down like that they thought and they came up with a dot net core so this is the thing which has been introduced this was released recently only 2020 since this 21st 2020 or 2019 20 or something i didn't remember so right now the version running is 6 or something like that they are just running 
now dot net core values integers so this is an first one is the main advantages this is an open source okay previously dot net framework is a closed source like ios apple open source now they shifted to the open source why because their market so like apple apple can able to retain the market why because it has their own marketing strategies and all those things same thing microsoft also is a closed only so whenever you want to buy excel you want to use it means you need to buy you want to use the windows means you need to buy you want to use the dot net framework means you need to buy you want to use the da database server means sql server means you need to buy so you want ias means so ias will be given when you purchase this windows only ias will not support in the linux so these type of constraints are there so then the developers if you restrict the developers like this means then the developers will go away why because they want wide variety of freedom so now they got they, they have uh, this come as a open source that means anybody uh, everyone can able to change the code and everybody can able to access it so when it come the open source dot net core supports in all the web servers but some constraints are there still so in between this one they it is using some other web server as a reverse proxy so come some constraints are there still they are working out why because so they are making use of the dot net framework only instead of uh, redeveloping everything so they are making use but some constraints are there but still they are able to run in all the languages and also in all the web servers also so this is the actual introduction of this uh, back end thing now what i want to tell you is so here is a server okay here is a server and here the code will be hosted the code will be hosted now here is a client thing so here the user will sit and here you will try to www.somethingfacebook.com or something he will try to access it now he will make a request okay he will make a request and this request will be received on the port 8080 okay this is the port which will be always listening web server will take care of this port 8080 so whenever you install a web server web server will automatically take that port so uh, this port 8080 is meant for web server only that is either it may be apache it may be ias or anything so if two web servers are there in, inside your uh, same system is then it the conflicts will come then you need to reassign the port for one web server to another port you need to reassign that's a different concept that comes in the networking concept now it will resend to the port 8080 and here it will go into this one and the web server will root it to it to particular compiler or to the dot net or anything whichever the thing you want it will give you and the response okay the response will commit as a plain html okay and this response will be sent to the browser so which the browser understands either it may be javascript html or css so whatever it may be now when the response is sent so this connection is closed okay this connection is closed that is why http is called as a stateless protocol stateless protocol so now when i make a request again when i make a request again the server doesn't know that okay this is the guy who has requested previously for me so this is the only guy right so i know what he wants so i will send the response means this will not think web, web server will not think this is a stateless protocol that means it will not maintain the state it will not maintain the state that the it will not maintain the records of the user so now the same user if he sends the request again this will be considered as a new request okay plain new request so this will all the requests will be considered as a plain request only so http is called as a stateless one request and one response that's it request response life cycle this one is completed after sending the response the bro the web server will completely forget about that user who has sent the request and who for whom i have sent the response the server will completely forget now the client when he wants again the data means again he wants to make a he needs to make a new request again so like this he need to make a request this request will not exist like that using that same request he cannot send the data so that is the one one thing you need to understand so now this is the problem happens so for example let's say that here is the server and here is the client and he has accessed some facebook.com or something like this he has accessed it and i got the i, I made a request and i got the response done finish okay now again i want to get some data here so i forgot something i forgot uh, so i i forgot some data here i need to get some data again here so what that means what i need to do i need to again make a request here okay i need to make again a request and again the response will be sent to the server uh, to the client so that this entire page again it will come along with this information okay so that means when i am trying to access this page when i am trying to access this page so when i want to get some only some piece of data only i want to get only some piece of data so that means i need to, i need to tell again to the server 
so i need to get this along the, this piece of information so then the server will send all this information along with this one okay so like this actually the previously it will used to happen so that means whenever we used to get a, some some piece of data means i already have some piece of data i need some extra piece of data from the server means again the server will send all this data including this data it will try to send it then what is happens here the network latency it will happen so that means the network will be have will be having so much of memory consumption and so much of bandwidth consumption it will be having so for example for one request it is having 300 kb of data it is sending means so second time also you, you need only 10 kb of data why because some kb of data you have forgotten so then it will send you again 300 plus 10 310 kb of data it will try to send you so like this if you go on accessing this one if you have a 2 gb internet if you access something like uh, uh, some sometimes if you access it then immediately your memory will go away so these are all the uh, con concepts will come so keeping this one in mind so they have introduced a they have introduced a new one that is nothing but an ajax thing so ajax thing means using this ajax so you can in you can ask the server whatever the information you want so whatever the piece of information you want so here you will be having here the client here it will be the server so now here the client has already loaded the web page okay here the client already has loaded the web page now using the javascript okay using the javascript you will ask you will make a request to here okay previously the browser will make a request okay the browser makes a request but right now using the javascript you can make a request and you will ask some piece of data and this server will send you that piece of data and that piece of data you can add it through the these are document dom object model method and all those things you can add it here in the web page so like this you can do it so this type of process is called as an ajax so making an asynchronously without page refreshing asynchronously you are making an activex control activex control means you are making a request through the javascript so this is called as an ajax so how we can make an ajax request i will try to show you so for example for making an ajax request so what we need to make it is so this is the concept so overall uh, making an uh, what is an ajax request? why we need to make an ajax request now let's try to learn how to make an ajax request 